you know, sometimes things aren't great. Hell, they aren't even good. But they are perfectly fine. You know, just okay. Fully middle of the road and serviceable. But, you know, is just being okay really okay you know (laughs) what i mean is do we truly find it satisfactory to provide or be provided with only the bare minimum well let's dive a little deeper into that theme now who i'm talking about specifically is gearbox software the developers of the borderlands series and that's pretty much it. <laughs> when you look outside of the Borderlands series for things they've done, it's either not worth mentioning or a smoking trash fire of a game. Things like Brothers in Arms, Battleborn, and Aliens, Colonial Marines, <laughs> right? There, as I as I listed those off to you right now, either you said, what's that? Uh, who cares? Or... Ew, that, right? Something to that effect. So, you know, let's just stick to Borderlands. Uh, Ah, Borderlands. Ding, ding, ding. That one rings a bell. Yes, Borderlands. A series whose most recent headline hasn't been a particularly uh, positive one with the first DLC for the spinoff, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, releasing and it being received by the public about as well as a wet fart to the face. The cited problems with this DLC are that it does nothing new and it's short as hell, with many complaining that it isn't even worth the $10 it costs. (laughs) Imagine not being worth $10, (laughs) good God. But you know what? I think this problem is a good chance to highlight the complacency and stagnation clearly afflicting Borderlands and Gearbox. You see, when Borderlands released in 2009, it took your edgy teen brains by storm with Mad Max-esque aesthetics and Daniel Tosh-style pee and poop jokes. (laughs) Then, you know, Borderlands 2 in 2012 objectively improved on everything and gave us one of the most iconic video game villains ever in Handsome Jack. But... By the time Borderlands 3 came around in 2019, despite refining the gameplay to its finest point and being the best the series has to offer, if you ask me, a lot of Borderlands fans had burned themselves out on the series. You know, they they were just over it and had even maybe outgrown its uh, comedic brand. So... While it may be the absolute best you can do sticking to the Borderlands guns, it doesn't really matter if the Borderlands series formulaically is kind of old and stale, you know? And the follow-up spinoff, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which had a chance to change up and revitalize the series in a big way, you know, may have just ended up being the nail in the coffin at the end of the day. Listen, Borderlands has always been a bit of a sloggy grind fest. Basically, the whole thing boils down to run over here, shoot thing. Oh no, run over there, shoot thing, you know. And how do you keep somebody engaged in something that at its base feels like chores? You know, how do you make it feel engaging? Well, apparently, you tell them some jokes, (laughs) I guess. And... That part works for as long as we find you funny, but, you know, what else you got? You know, oh, uh, perhaps an assortment of creative weapon types and grenade variety. But I'll be honest here, uh, I think Borderlands fakes its weapon diversity well. You know, it fakes it well, but over time, it will inevitably fail to trick you any longer. And we've been at this for over a decade so you know how much more time do you need i mean any given game in the series basically has like 10 guns five element types and four notable 
perks that just get randomly plastered onto each other, resulting in the faux diversity that we know and love. And like I said, we've been at this for over a decade. And frankly, I think it's over. (laughs) I really do. I mean, Destiny 2 has been looting and shooting better than you have for five years now, you know? Uh, hell, I don't. I think even the much slept on Outriders might even have you beat. And just as a quick sidebar, if you like looter shooters, but you kind of want to mix it up a bit and have something a little more fresh, try out Outriders. You know, go ahead and do that if you haven't already. It, it was made by People Can Fly. You you may know them from their work on Gears of War Judgment. Yes, I know, far from the best Gears, but they bring some of that cover-based third-person action to the loot-shoot genre in a great way. The story's fine, although the dialogue is an atrocity, <laughs> but but it doesn't that doesn't matter really at all. It's got fun gameplay. The class abilities are much more fun and memorable than any of the painfully forgettable abilities in the Borderlands series. You know, play Outriders, you won't regret it. It is not a live service, just a good full-bodied game that stands as it is, like Borderlands in that regard. And I think they uh, even have a little expansion coming out soon. So yeah, th- uh, this is not an advertisement. They do not, they would not pay me for this. <laughs> I, can only, I only wish. But anyway, back to Gearbox. I mean... What are these people supposed to do? I honestly think it would be in their best interest to just step away from Borderlands for a good while. Now, you may be asking, well, if they step away from Borderlands, what would they even do? Well, I for one would hope that they step all the way out of their comfort zone. Just step all the way out there. In terms of genre, just do something entirely different. You know, try to create something. Try to do something. Be inventive, you know? You made all these first-person games. Go third-person, maybe. You made all these shooter-based games. Go melee, maybe. You did all the side questy stuff to the brim fetch quest bullshit. Go linear, maybe. You know, do do you see what I'm getting at? Do something else. But, you know, keep what makes you you and make something good with it. Like, look at Tango Gameworks. They went from third-person survival horror with the evil within to first-person action shooter parkour thing with Ghostwire Tokyo. And no, it wasn't a perfect 10 out of 10 first outing. You know, you might not put out the most polished thing ever because you're trying something new, but maybe the second one can be that 10 out of 10 and it'll be done with a fresh perspective. You know, Tango Gameworks still included that spooky ambiance that makes them them in a game that played nothing like what they'd done previously. So maybe Gearbox, you can keep that sense of humor that you know you're known for that permeated the Borderlands series, but in something completely new. Whatever the case may be, I think we shouldn't see Borderlands for a long time, and maybe it can come back fresh and different far in the future. I'm not saying I think that's going to happen. I think that's what should happen. I think that's what needs to happen at this point. I just think that uh, Gearbox is complacent. They've, uh, you know, gotten way too comfortable. They think they can just keep on doing the same thing over and over again and rake in the money. And it's not going to make for a, you know, player friendly experience, you know. And I think if we want to get back there, they need to take some time off of it. I think they rode it till the wheels fell off and then tried to ride it some more, which only drew more attention to the fact that, you don't have any wheels, <laughs> like, you know, but that's just my stupid opinion. Maybe they'll keep going. They'll prove me wrong and we'll all have a big hearty laugh about how dumb I am. And that'll be fun for us all. Right. Either way, feel free to tell me what you think. Do you do you want more Borderlands? You know, maybe you're on the opposite end. Do you want things to change? Do you want things to stay the same? Or should Gearbox just move on? You know, whatever the case, I have been and will continue to be Waifu Belector. I hope you find peace. But in the meantime, uh, go out and get you some maidens.